Dragging out an extension cord every time we need a grinder can get annoying, and when you need to use a grinder far away from a power source, a plug-in style is not an option. This DeWalt cordless grinder is perfect for those quick jobs in the shop, and for areas you don't have a place to plug in a cord. There are two main things I see people get confused about when using this tool. First, this DeWalt 20 volt cordless angle grinder is used for cutting and shaping metal and concrete. It is often confused for an automotive buffer that is used to buff paint. This grinder is not for buffing paint unless you want to completely remove the paint to weld on the metal for making a repair. Second, there's a big debate if this grinder has a 5 8 or 7 8 inch arbor which will determine the size of grinding wheels you use. The arbor is a part that supports the grinding wheels. When you pull the nut off, you'll see a washer with a step on it. This is the arbor. The arbor holds the grinding wheel flat and the step goes into the hole on the grinding wheel to keep it centered as it's spinning so the grinding wheel does not wobble. It's important to have the correct size hole on the grinding wheel because it's not safe if it's not secured correctly. On this grinder, the step of the arbor is 7 8 of an inch and the threads in the nut are 5 8 of an inch. Both the step and threads can be referred to as the arbor and an easy way to figure out what size arbor you need depends on how the blade will be secured to the grinder. If you are using a grinder's nut to secure the blade, you will use a grinding wheel for a 7 8 inch arbor. When you screw it down, it will sit flush to the washer and the step will go inside the center of the hole of the grinding wheel. If you're using an attachment that threads onto the grinder's arbor, then you'll use an attachment with 5 8 inch threads. When you screw it down, it will sit flush against the bottom of the threads, it will not touch the flat washer, you will not use a nut when the attachment threads onto the grinder. To recap, you'll use 7 8 inch when the grinder's nut secures the blade, you'll use 5 8 inch when you thread on an attachment. The grinding wheels and cutoff blades you can use come in a few different shapes and they all use a nut to secure them to a 7 8 inch arbor. The maximum diameter of the blade can be 4 and a half inches. Grinding wheels are made for shaping metal and concrete. They can be the thick discs like these if you need to remove a lot of material or the sandpaper wheels like these if you just want to remove the paint or need to smooth out the metal. Cutoff blades are thin wheels like these that are made for cutting through metal or concrete. Attachments that thread onto the grinder use the 5 8 inch threads also have a maximum diameter of 4.5 inches. These are normally a wire wheel brush, which is mostly used for cleaning metal to get the paint and the rust off. Now going back to the grinding wheels and cutoff blades that use a 7 8 inch arbor and a nut to hold them on. This nut is different than most grinders since it has a spring in a centerpiece, so it holds the blade on better than a regular nut. This means you don't need a hex key tool every time you change a blade. The only time I needed a hex key tool to remove a blade is when I tightened it too much and I couldn't get it off. I normally use my fingers to tighten the nut. To remove it, I'll grab the blade and spin it backwards to start loosening it, then spin the nut off. Either way, when you tighten and loosen the blades, the button on the back of the grinder needs to be held down so the motor doesn't spin. The grinder has three main safety features. It has a brake built into the motor so the blade stops spinning two seconds after you let go of the trigger. This keeps the grinder from taking off across the room when you set it down since the blade isn't spinning after you're done using it. The kickback protection works with the brake to stop the motor if the blade becomes pinched so the grinder doesn't jump back at you. After using other brands of cordless grinders on the job site, I've realized that DeWalt has a kickback protection dialed in. It doesn't cut out too soon and stops you from cutting when a blade is not pinched. For example, I was cutting some big rusted bolts with another brand of grinder and the grinder kept stopping and took me forever to get through the bolt. At first I thought it was dead battery, when I went to change it I found out it was fully charged. Then I went to my truck to get this DeWalt grinder and was able to cut through the rest of the bolts with ease. And the third safety feature is to protect you from flying sparks. The built-in guard can easily be adjusted so you can get into weird angles and make a cut without sending a shower of sparks back at yourself. To adjust the guard, push down on the lever, spin the guard, then let go of the lever to lock the guard in place. The grinder can be used with your right or left hand and a side support handle can go on either side so you can use two hands to keep the grinder from jumping around. This cordless 20 volt grinder can run any DeWalt's 20 volt batteries along with the flex volt batteries. The brushless motor has the power needed to spin the blade at 9000 RPMs so you can quickly make a cut. Grinders like these do not have a variable speed trigger, so when you squeeze the trigger you're getting the full power spinning at 9000 RPMs. As you are deciding what battery to use, it will depend on the job you need to perform. This grinder uses 800 watts of power, so a 5 amp hour battery like this will last 7.5 minutes which is a lot of runtime if you aren't continuously using the grinder. If you have a bigger job to tackle, the DeWalt 6 amp hour battery will last 9 consecutive minutes. The flex volt battery will give you the most amount of runtime 
since they are the biggest battery DeWalt currently offers. There are a couple options with buying this grinder, depending if you need just a tool or you need a battery and charger as well. This cordless angle grinder is a DeWalt DCG413. Let me break down the DeWalt rights of part numbers. The D is for DeWalt, C is for cordless, and a G is for grinder. Then it lists a model number of the tool. The letters and number is following the model number, indicate if it's a bare tool or the type of kit it comes in. A bare tool will have a B at the end of it, it does not come with a battery, so it'll come just like this and you'll use a battery you already own. You can also buy this grinder in a kit. The kit comes with a grinder, two 6 amp hour batteries, a charger, and a carrying case. You can find a link to this tool and a kit it comes in in the description down below. Once you start using this cordless angle grinder, you'll be able to quickly tackle your next project since you're not tied to an electrical outlet and you still have a lot of power.